Hey everybody, Home Slice Henry here, and we've got a really fun challenge video for you guys today. In today's video, we are doing the Triple Gen 6 Starter Challenge Team. So I can only use Del Fox, Greninja, and Chestnut, and I have to do my regular day sets of battles and see if I can win. And I will let you guys know that I did a full day's worth of battles, 25 battles on stream, and I actually won more than I lost, so it went super, super well. One last thing I will let you guys know before we hop into the battles. These battles, as I mentioned, were done on stream, so sometimes there are some sub-alerts that do pop up very briefly during the course of the battle, so I apologize for that. I will move those for future videos. So without further ado, let's hop into these battles. We hop into the first match here. I will let you guys know I'm going to be showcasing two 4-1 sets that I had with the team and then just a couple wins that I was proud of at the end. We lead... Delphox into a Galarian Stunfisk, and they do a pretty nice catch under their Wigglytuff. This actually works out well for me, because both my Pokemon in the back are weak to a Charmer, so I'm going to stay in with Delphox, and since I boosted up my attack, I'm just going to farm down. So now I've got the Charmer out of the way, and I'm in a really good spot. Azumarill comes in, I'm going to go for the Psychic. This should do about half of Azumarill's health. Boom, it lands, huge damage. Now I'm in a really good spot. I can line up the Chestnut with the Azumarill, and I can line up my Greninja with the Galarian Stunfisk. So from here, it should be a pretty straightforward match. My opponent, of course, not knowing what I was running, did make a bit of a mistake there, and that's really gonna benefit me going forward because I don't really have an answer for Charm in the back. Charge move coming through from the Azumarill. I am gonna let this go as I do survive an Ice Beam. Yep, I'm able to survive that, and I'm able to farm down. So we're in a really good spot here. The Stunfisk comes back out. I'm going straight for the Superpower. Does get the shield and I'm able to land a second superpower. So we are in a commanding position in this game. Quick swap onto the Greninja. And from here, all we have to do is shield up that rock slide and then we should be able to bubble down and take the win. So as you can see, the team works exactly as planned in game one. I do use Greninja as a safe swap whenever I do have a bad lead. This is more of a neutral lead with Victini here. And we are gonna build up and go for the flame charge right away just to start buffing our attack, doing a little bit extra, and Victini tanks that. So good on Victini. Charge move coming through. I'm thinking this is a V-Create. So I do let this go. It's a Psychic, oh no. Absolutely smacks me, and they do a quick swap into their Stunfisk. At this point, I'm realizing they have the Victini in the back, so I need to use Chestnut here. This Chestnut does not want to see the Victini, so I'm going to bring in Chestnut, and Chestnut is a really good Stunfisk counter, as every charge move Stunfisk has is resisted. So we can just tank these rock slides absolutely all day. That's not a problem. And I'm building up to two superpowers. And so this is going to be doing massive super effective damage. We do get the shield and we're going for the second one. We'll see if they do decide to commit both shields here. And they actually do commit both shields. They quick swap into Victini, but my switch timer is up. So I'm able to come in to Greninja and farm down. So now we have a two shield advantage. And so we are in a phenomenal spot. Surfetch comes out, and this is where Aerial Ace is incredibly helpful. Since I'm running Greninja as my safe swap here, I am running Aerial Ace. So I do have some play if I safe swap and they counter with either a fighter or a grass. So we are able to take them out. Stunfist comes back in. I am going to let this go because from here I know Chestnut is going to be able to get to the superpower. I do over farm by just a little bit, go for the superpower, and this will be taking out that Stunfisk and giving me the win. So as you can see, back-to-back -back wins, starting out really, really strong with the Triple Gen 6 starter team. And Delphox and Venusaur. Something I noticed is Fire has a lot of good play as a lead in the current meta, especially a Fire Psychic. Because a lot of people are running fighters up front to combat Bastiodon, and fire can help combat a lot of grasses, like a lot of people run Shadow Victory Bells up front. So they save swap into Alolan Marowak, we counter with Greninja. Greninja can take all charge moves from Alolan Marowak, so we can farm down. Venusaur comes out, we're able to get to the Aerial Ace, we're really hoping this lands as this would be doing a ton of damage. Unfortunately, they do shield it up. Not sure why they shielded it to be honest, but feels bad for sure. <laughs> And we're going to wait our timer and come in with the Delphox. They come in with Umbreon. We counter with Chestnut. We don't want to go for the superpowers too early and debuff ourselves. So we're going to let that go. That's just a foul play. It looks like they may not have last resort on their Umbreon, which honestly works out great for me because that means all their charge moves are going to be resisted onto Chestnut. 
We do get a shield with energy ball, and I am going to shield this up just in case, but it is just another foul play, so I didn't really have to shield that, but hey, you know, better safe than sorry, right? So we're coming with an energy ball next, just to try and get the Umbreon low, and now it should be in superpower range. We can safely no shield this. It is just a foul play, and we should be able to build up and go for the superpower that is going to be taking out the Umbreon. And from here, we're in a really, really good spot. That is going to take out the Umbreon. We quick swap back into our Delphox. We're going to shield up the charge attack from the Venusaur. It's just a Frenzy Plant. And one Flame Charge is going to banish Venusaur back from whence it came. Boom! As you can see, another victory for the triple starter team. Let's go! Hopping into the next game here, Delphox into Azumarill. This is not a good lead, but since I am double week two Azumarill, I am going to stay in rather than switch out. My goal is just to land a Psychic, and I do get to the Psychic. I found that a lot of Azumarills don't shield the Psychics, just from when I was using it. This one, however, does, so that rather surprised me. And it looks like they are trying to farm down, which is definitely a mistake in my eyes, as I'm gonna be able to get to two Psychics, and I'm able to get their health very low. They are loaded with energy. I'm going to come in with Chestnut, and I am going to have to start shielding because Ice Beam and Play Rough would both be super effective with Chestnut's typing. Another charge move coming through from Azu. I am going to shield this as well, and then I'm just going to Vine Whip down. So that way I can preserve the health, even though I had to expend both shields. A Ferrothorn comes in. I'm going for the instant superpower, hopefully to try and catch them off guard before I switch out. Boom, we landed huge damage. Now we're going for a second superpower to hopefully draw the shield. We get the shield. We're gonna quick swap into Greninja, basically just to sack the Greninja to force them to throw. So they throw their power whip. That's gonna take out Greninja and we're coming back in with the chestnut. Charge move coming through. I'm counting on this being a charge move that I resist. It is just power whip, so we're fine. Let's see if we can vine whip down. We're able to Vine Whip down. We're in a fantastic position. It is Galarian Stunfisk in the back. Chestnut does so well against Galarian Stunfisk. We throw the Energy Ball. We overfarm by just a little bit. Then we're going to be going for the Super Power. And this is going to be enough to take out the Galarian Stunfisk. As you can see, Chestnut is definitely, definitely performing well with this particular team. Delphox into Swamper. Absolutely terrible lead here. I do safe swap into Greninja. They come in with Atropius. Here's where Aerial Ace is going to be helpful as I am going to be able to take about 50% of Tropius' health. Boom, we land it. Oh, it looks like not quite 50%. So we are going to wait our switch clock and then we are going to come in with Delphox. Come in with Delphox. Charge move coming through from the Tropius. It is just a Leaf Blade. We do resist that. And I do go for the Flame Charge just to buff my attacks because I don't really want to take any more damage because we are getting quite low. Swampert comes back. Quick swap into Chestnut to catch the Hydro Cannon from Swampert. And let's see what they have in the back. They actually stay in here, which surprises me. Charge move coming through from the Swampert. We are going to be shielding this up just in case. Oh, just a Hydro Cannon. And we're trying to farm down. Unfortunately, we cannot quite farm down. I am going to be shielding this up. Just to be safe, we'll see what they have in the back. It's a Stunfisk. Okay, so we definitely have an uphill battle ahead of us. So we land the Energy Ball. Now we are going to go for a Superpower. This is more than likely going to get the Shield, but I wanted to use a Charge Move that was a little cheaper. Swap into Delphox in the hope that they would throw, which they do, so that ends up working out. They just go for a Rock Slide, but unfortunately, I... It's not looking like I'm gonna have the energy needed to take out the Stunfisk and the shield, and Earthquake comes through and takes me out. So a really well played to my opponent. Really tough lead, fought back, but unfortunately wasn't quite able to grab the win. Hopping into the next 4-1 set, getting Delphox into Surfetched. And here we are resisting the counters, but we do have to watch out for the Night Slashes. So we are going to be shielding this up because Night Slash would do a ton of damage. Delphox is very glassy. And we're going to go for a Flame Charge here. The main goal is Psychic would be super effective, but they're more than likely going to Shield. This way we can boost up our Fire Spins. We are going to commit two Shields and see if we can farm down. We're going to Shield up that Night Slash, and they swap into Deoxys. We are going to come in with Greninja. We are really hoping that they do not have Thunderbolt here. And they have Thunderbolt. 
This is not what we wanted to see. Poor Greninja. <laughs> we are going to wait our clock. We're going to come in with Delphox. Delphox does land the Flame Charge, and we're going to see if we can force the Deoxys to throw. Actually, we are able to farm it down, so this is really, really good. And we'll see what they do end up having in the back. Galarian Stunfisk. I swear that is the most common Pokemon nowadays, even surpassing Azu. We do get the shield, and we do some extra damage before we're taken out. And now it is Chestnut time. Chestnut's coming in, and all shields are down. Earthquake comes through, and, but we resist everything from Stunfisk. And we are going to go for an Energy Ball, because we're trying not to debuff ourselves. The Energy Ball lands, and it doesn't quite kill, so we are going to have to soak this Rock Slide. But we are not debuffed. Surfetched comes out. Now we are going to debuff ourselves just so we can take out the Surfetched. Superpower comes through. Let's see if we can Vine Whip down. And with one HP, Chestnut holds on and takes the game. So an incredibly close game, but we were able to take it. Oh my goodness. Hopping into the next game, Delphox into Shadow Vic. This is exactly what we want to see. This is a fantastic matchup. They swap into a Deoxys. I am going to stay in and go for the Flame Charge, strictly because I don't have a great Deoxys answer, so I do want to land some chip damage before I come in with the Chestnut. And at this point, we are going to be no shielding everything, because Chestnut doesn't have the best matchup against Vic, so we are just going to be soaking all of these charge moves. Another Rock Slide comes through that is resisted. Looks like we are building up to two superpowers and we're going for the first. Even though this is going to be resisted, it should be enough to take out the Deoxys, which it is. And then we'll have a superpower to throw at the Victory Bell. Superpower coming through. They're more than likely going to not shield this because they know it's resisted, which it is. So well played by them. And since we waited to switch out, we are going to wait our switch clock. So our switch clocks line back up before we come back in with Delphox. They come in with Bastiodon. We come in with Greninja. We're doing super effective with Bubble. Unfortunately, we don't have Surf. So that does make it a bit trickier of a matchup. So we're going straight Night Slash. Unfortunately, we are not able to get the boost. We do have two shields though. So we're in a good position of where we do have a shield advantage. And that should be able to help us beat this Bastiodon with Greninja. Night Slash coming through. Still no boost, unfortunately. Able to get to another Night Slash. As you can see, Greninja is quite spammy. Night Slash lands, and let's see if we can bubble down. We can bubble down, which is perfect. Vic's going to come back out. I'm going to throw a charge move. I accidentally clicked on Night Slash instead of Aerial Ace. It gets the shield. Quick swap into Delphox, and we are able to farm down and take the win. So as you can see, the uh, really common team of Shadow Victory Bell... Defense Deoxys and Bastiodon doesn't stand a chance against the Triple Gen 6 starters. Catching a great lead here. They swap into Azumarill, we swap into Chestnut. So they did try and catch our charge move, but we were able to catch the fact that they switched and hold our energy. We're shielding up this Ice Beam, and we're building up a ton of extra energy. Now we're going for an Energy Ball. This is going to do a ton of damage, if not shielded. Boom. We're going to try and Vine Whip down. Unfortunately, they get to a charge move on 1 HP. So, nicely played by them. That Ice Beam's going to hurt quite a bit. And now the Bronzong is going to come back in. And I'm going to throw the Super Power. Because one Confusion is going to be taking out Chestnut. So I do want to see if we can grab a shield, which we can. We get Confusion down. We're coming right back in with Delphox. And going straight for a Flame Charge. And this should be getting that last shield, as they don't want their Bronzong to go down. Charge move coming through from them. This is probably a Bulldoze. I'm going to shield this up. We do get the shield, so now it looks like a bit of lag, unfortunately, and we are able to farm down, and oh no, it's shift tree in the back. Double weak to fire, you absolutely hate to see it. Boom! Delphox closing out the game. So nice uh, GG's to my opponent, but Delphox kind of took over there. Hopping into the next game, catching a Toxicroak lead, and this is one of the fighters that I was mentioning earlier and part of why I wanted to lead with Delphox because even in this matchup where Mud Bomb would be super effective so long as I throw my flame charge I can double shield and still end up winning switch advantage going for the first flame charge gets the shield Mud Bomb coming through I'm gonna shield this up as well so I can get switch advantage because switch advantage is very important with this team and we're able to farm down so we're in a really good spot here Drift Blend comes out, and we're going straight for a Flame Charge. 
and we get a shield, which is great. And unfortunately, we cannot quite get to the flame charge. At this point, I'm going to come in with Greninja as we're able to be super effective with Night Slash. A bit of lag there. Charge move coming through. We can survive whatever it throws at us. It's just Icy Wind, and we're going to counter with a Night Slash. And this will be doing super effective damage. And even with the debuff, should be taking out the Drift Blend. Boom, it does. Stunfist comes out. And we're going to go for a quick Night Slash to do a little bit of chip damage before we hop into Chestnut. Land the Night Slash, hop into Chestnut, and now it's in super power range, and my opponent concedes the match. So really well played to my opponent there, and he actually stopped by the stream later to say hi and tell me GG. So that was very, very cool. Hopping into the next match, and we have Delphox into Fire Fang Mawol. So this is a great lead for us, to be honest. We're going straight for the flame charge. If they choose not to shield, this is going to be KOing them because of their steel typing. Boom, it takes them out. And then with Azumarill, which is not what I want to see, to be honest, I am going to go for the Psychic before I get taken out in the hope that I can do some nice neutral damage. Unfortunately, they do decide to shield that up and they bubble all the way down. So now their Azumarill is absolutely loaded on energy and I'm going to bring in my Chestnut. I shield up the first charge move. It is the Ice Beam and after two more they are able to get to another ice beam so it looks like they were at 100 energy and i'm going to go for an energy ball and they catch it onto their victory bell so really well played there unfortunately my fire is dead so i really should have switched out when they brought in the azu and i did not and that's going to cost me yeah nothing much i can do here at this point unfortunately this is going to end up being a ggs my opponent was really smart, realized he was double weak to fire, stayed in, then brought in the Azu. How I could have played this better is if I had safe swapped out of the Gale Fox as soon as the Azumarill came in, then I was more than likely going to be able to win this matchup. So really, really well played to my opponent there. All right, and we're hopping into the next game against Maxer 2016, leading Delphox into Clefable. This is perfect because my whole back line is super weak to Charmers and I'm going to resist the charm damage. And I do go for the flame charge. Looks like that they did catch the flame charge. So nice play by them. Onto Scrafty. So we're gonna go in with Chestnut here. And the nice thing is, is we should resist the foul plays, as you can see there. And we're gonna go for an energy ball. This is gonna do some nice neutral damage onto Scrafty. And we actually get the second shield. So that works out. Now we're going for a superpower, and this is going to be doing super effective damage and KOing Scrafty. So boom, Scrafty taken care of. Clefable comes out, charms us down. We come back in with Delphox. The Clefable's out of shields. So here we can safely go for a flame charge, and this is going to be doing a ton of damage. And wow, nicely nice there. And we're going to be able to shield up the Meteor Mash. And then one more Fire Spin takes out the Clefable. See what's in the back, Charizard, and we have Greninja. So we're in a really good spot. We don't have Surf, but we're gonna be able to go for Night Slash, and that's gonna be doing some heavy neutral damage. Boom. And then one more bubble takes out the Charizard. So we are able to take the game. So as you can see there, a, uh, a, a really, really fun team to run for sure. Hopping into the next game, we have two games more here. Here we catch another great lead. We catch Grass up front with Delphox. They swap into Marowak, we have Greninja, so we are in a perfect position here. All we need is Galarian Stunfisk get back, and we have the perfect counter team. They throw a Bone Club, that's fine. We are going to go for the Night Slash, and we've intentionally overfarmed on energy to try and get them to shield. They shield, which is perfect, and now we get to go for the second Night Slash. They're going to let this go, and that gives us switch advantage and shield advantage, so we have a commanding lead in this matchup. Oh, it looks like they have a Zoomerill in back, so honestly... That still works because Chestnut does very well against the Azumarill. We go straight for the Aerial Ace. And the Azumarill decides to throw. So that works out perfectly for me. Play rough, that's fine. We're going to come in with Chestnut. And now we're in a really, really good spot. They come in with Meganium. I switch back to Delphox. I am getting to shield this up in case it's an Earthquake. Turns out it is just a Frenzy Plant. And I'm going to go for the Flame Charge right away to start ramping up these Fire Spins flame charge we do get the shield i am going to be letting this go because i'm pretty sure this is just a frenzy plant yep that's fine 
and I am going to be able to fire spin down, and now I'm gonna go straight for the Psychic onto the Azumarill, and this is going to be doing quite a bit of damage, and I think we'll take out the Azumarill. Boom, Delphox, Azumarill counter confirmed. Let's go. <laughs> and we're hopping into the last game against Pizza Hut S1 Avenue. Again, another Toxicroak lead, and from here, as we've learned from the previous battle, so long as we go straight Flame Charge and double shield the Mud Bombs, we can take Switch Advantage. We will be at a Shield Deficit, but we'll have Switch Advantage, which is huge for this team. Going straight for the Flame Charge, that does get the Shield, and now our Fire Spins are doing even more damage. Another Mud Bomb coming through, we're going to Shield this up as well, and then we're just going to Fire Spin down and take our Switch Advantage. And even though we're down in terms of a shield, we have quite a lot of energy. So we'll be able to throw that right away. We're going straight for the Flame Charge onto the Obstagoon. And unfortunately, Obstagoon is able to farm down. So that's not ideal, but we're gonna come in with Chestnut. And at this point, so long as he doesn't have Gunk Shot, we're good. Does not have Gunk Shot. All we have to do is get to a superpower. They bring in Jirachi, we counter with Greninja. And we are in commanding position here. We have our counters exactly the way we need them to be. Huge damage there. Charge move coming through from Jirachi. That's Doom Desire. Looks like a little bit of lag. Doom Desire lands and we are able to farm down. Coming back in with the Obstagoon. We're gonna go for the Aerial Ace. And this is going to be doing some solid neutral damage. As you can see there, they're able to farm us down. Chestnut is very tanky. It's going to be able to survive this since we know he doesn't have Gunk Shot. And we are at the Superpower, and the Superpower is going to be doing more than enough to take out the Obstagoon. Again, I've said it so much this video. Boom! Let's go! Okay. So as you can see, this team was a ton of fun to run. I ran it for all 25 battles and actually went 13 and 12. And I'm in rank 13, so these aren't like rank one battles or anything like that. I was really surprised with how this team did and I was super happy with how it turned out. It just goes to show that even though they may not be rated the highest, these starters do have some pretty good synergy. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. And if you guys are new and you're enjoying the content, definitely hit that subscribe button. It's free and it does really help out the channel. And I will see you guys in the next video.